Here we have an HP Spectre laptop that came in for no power. The laptop has two USB-C ports. One of the ports charges at 20 volts, zero amps, which means the laptop is not charging. It does not power on. And the second port, when the charging cable is plugged in, it flickers and blinks white. And the laptop does not power on. So I already have the board or the laptop open from the back. We replaced the battery just in case and that did not solve the problem. And the laptop looks something like this. I removed this paper shield here so we can look at the motherboard and see what's going on. So we're gonna start at the far right. We have two USB-C connectors. We're gonna do a quick visual inspection and we're gonna measure and test along the way. If you look here, I have flux. And the reason I have flux is because I was interrupted by a local customer who came to buy some stuff. He bought a hot air station, flux, wick, multimeter probes, t-shirts, and a lot of stuff. And he was wondering why I use a lot of flux. So I told him, when I'm under the microscope, it looks like it's a lot, but the flux that I'm applying is half a drop, half a teardrop. The one that you see here, it looks like a lot under the microscope, but it's not. So I applied a tiny bit for him to show him and he was not able to see it with his naked eye until I put it under the microscope. And that's why you see flux right here. So what I want to do is I want to quickly measure for a short on this Thunderbolt chip meter and diode mode. But of course, the multimeter is off. Now it's on. And we don't have a short. Okay, so we're going to assume that this chip is good. From my experience working on this laptop, I think I may have a couple of videos where we had a short circuit on this or this capacitor here. Or no, not this, on, on one of those three. So I ended up replacing the chip and the laptop worked again. And on other incidents, we had a short circuit on one of those three caps and it turned out to be a CPU problem. So you never know. Let's assume this chip is good. Why not measure this controller chip diode? That's one USB-C controller chip and that's the other one. So every USB-C connector is linked to one of those chips and those chips fail. They fail without warning. That's how USB-C devices are like, whether it's a Nintendo Switch or MacBook Pro or MacBook Air or HP Spectre laptop with USB-C connectors. Sooner or later, that laptop will fail. Sooner than later. And visual inspection, I do not see anything obvious. I'm going to go ahead and replace both USB-C controllers and hope for the best. We're going to take a shot in the dark and replace those chips and see what happens. That's one. Uh, we're going to do the other one also. Maybe I can put airspeed down. We do not want components flying off the board. I'm using a narrow nozzle. And we're going to apply a river of flux. So everyone is happy. and then apply a mix loaded with unleaded solder so we can lower the melting temperature of solder and that will make it a lot easier to wick solder off the board. Right now, if I use my wick and soldering iron, we may rip pads off the board and we do not want to do that.
Okay, and that's enough. Let's do this side. And that's what's nice about Amtak Flux, original Amtak Flux. It cleans easy. The magic of Amtak Flux. In case you did not know, we are distributors for Amtak Flux. We do retail and wholesale. You can buy off our site at northridgefix.com along with all the tools that we use here. Hot air station, soldering station, thermal camera, voltage injection tool, charging stations, tweezers, wick, prying tools, everything. Old viewers, you already know, and a lot of you are already customers. But I keep mentioning this for all new viewers. So we're gonna grab one, and the chip is already rebuilt. We do not waste our time or life Reballing chips, we buy the chip already reballed. Let's start by soldering this chip. And pin number one should be right here. go and then we're gonna check to see if that chip made a connection it did and now we can reflow and the chip should settle in place it should move shift unless it's perfectly aligned and it looks like it was perfectly aligned Unless I did not see the shifting. We're going to do this one here. And then I'm going to hand it over to Big Boss to assemble and test. And hope for the best. Let's perfectly align this one also. That one shifted, top and top. We're done. Two chips are soldered on nicely. Let's clean up. Next, I have an iPad 12.9, second gen that came in for no power. And I do not know which board this one is. And I have an SSD drive that I need to work on as soon as possible. And I need to finish all those by 6 o'clock. Right now it's 4.30. Good luck. If you look all the way back there, there are a lot more stuff that we need to fix, supposedly today. But, <laughs> and look at the bucket right next to me. We have a video card. We have God knows what, a shoes. A shoe. No, a video card. And a shoe box. I need to finish working on this MSI 2060 card. I need to work on this iPad that was waiting on a power IC, the 00090 IC. We have a note on here. And I still need to work on this one here. I do not know what's wrong with this one, but those are all the urgent ones that we need to get done as soon as possible. And I need to work on this Nintendo Switch that was waiting on a part also. And 
what looks like a Dell Alienware motherboard or Asus. This one here. Good news or bad news? We want to see an orange light. Yes, I do see an orange light right here. Bismillah. Anything on the screen? Oh yeah, right there, right there. Awesome. Laptop is working and I was right about replacing both chips. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.